Good morning to everybody. It's, uh, I'm Roberto Garbo from uh, Turin, Italy. It's a great pleasure to be here in Dubai for uh, Groove PCR 2022. I will talk about complex uh, uh, CTO in, uh, in cheap uh, patient. These are my, uh, my disclosure. And we can say that uh, CTO are the more com most complex uh, uh, treatment we can have in uh, uh, interventional cardiologist. Uh, we, now, we know that with the hybrid approach, uh, so with anti-grade and retrograde approach, we have many options to, uh, to have recognition of uh, uh, our complex uh, uh, lesion. And uh, uh, we know by uh, progress CTO registry that uh, the more complex are the lesion, uh, the, uh, uh, the more we need many different strategies to obtain the result. You can see here with JCTO score zero in 88%, we can do with undergraduate escalation. While we go in a more complex situation like score JCTO score one, two, three, or four, we need more uh, different strategy, uh, at least 40% uh, of retrograde approach. So. I will show you a couple of cases so we can have a, a, then a discussion together. Uh, the first one is a case of 64 years old male, uh, hypertension dyslipidemic smoker with uh, a long history of uh, uh, CAD with the 1997 uh, ACS it was treated with the uh, bare metal stent on the right uh, coronary artery. And then uh, in December 2020 with anterior non STEMI, uh, we perform an angio that show a mid LED subocclusion and an occlusion uh, of the right uh, uh, beyond the stand. So we don't know exactly the time of the occlusion. Then with the, uh, with the LED was treated with the, uh, with drug routine stent and then for uh, angina uh, was indicated uh, uh, the uh, new attempt of uh, uh, RCA CTO PCI. So this is the case. This is the lesion. You can see here the complexity. We have instant restenosis, and the occlusion is in the middle of the right uh, at the level of bifurcation. And we have a retrograde uh, good septal connection. So I start with antigrade approach. This is IVUS guided PCI because the entry point is ambiguous. And you can see here the IVUS clearly show us the uh, entry point. You can see we have a huge classification at the level of bifurcation but it's clear. So we start to, uh, to puncture with the Navician is the new microcatheter from iVascular is a braided microcatheter with very good profile and very good trackability. With the Navician and Gaia 3, we were able to puncture and with IVUS, you can see here that the puncture is perfect. So we are sure that at the level of bifurcation, we are in plaque. You can clearly see now on IVUS uh, that we have a good punch on. But then we need to, we have a diffuse disease on the distal part of the right, and so we need to, uh, to follow with our wire in the, uh, in the good path intra, intra plaque. It was not so, so easy. You can see here the, the wire is, the Gaia is subintimal at the level of the distality of the right. At this time, we advanced the navigation, we, we had a step down with Fielder XTA, but with the, uh, still unsuccessful, you can see here we are not in a, in a good track. So uh, we, uh, we switch to retrograde approach. This is time to, for, for going retrograde. And we take the Navician, the same microcatheter, 150. We need to cross a stand strut on the LED. This is not an easy situation. This, you can see with the Sion Black, this is a septal surfing, a classical surfing. So the microcatheter is inside the LED and the Sion Black went easily. Real time for OSCOP registration in the, in the PDA. So no problem. Then we need to advance the microcatheter. Here you can see the Navician that uh, with very good profile, it cross easily the stand strut and then advance in the, uh, you can see here in the septal. If you can see my, my hands, is, this is a, a live case. Uh, the braided microcatheter, we cannot spin too much the microcatheter. It's not like a, a turnpike spiral or like a Corsair, which we need to spin, but we need to, we can move like 90 degrees left and right in order to help the advancement of the device. And with this, 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 movement, this movement, we were able to advance. We are in front of the lesion, you can see here, and then at this time we need to do, to make the connection. Now, 
Now, I, I like very much the Gladius wire. Uh, we have two kinds of, of Gladius uh, from Azai, the Gladius EX and the Gladius MG. This was a Gladius EX because at that time the, the Mongo was not available in Europe. Uh, and then performing a reverse card with two, two oh millimeter balloon, I was able to make the connection, to make the re-entry and externalize the wire. This is a, a R350 wire, that uh, uh, long wire for externalization. After that, balloon dilatation, IVUS evaluation, you can see here. This is interesting because you can see that at the level of the cracks, we are intraplaque, we are in intraluminal. Then in the distal part of the right, we are subintimal because we made here. You can see that at nine o'clock, we have the true lumen. Now is is at six o'clock, and the IVUS uh, now is intraplaque. So with the pullback, it's clear that we make the connection in the distal right in the subintimal space, and then at the level of the bifurcation, we are in the true. So we can save uh, uh, the big side branch. If you go back, you can see again the IVUS. Here, this is interesting to show. Here we are subintimal, so the connection is extra plaque, and then going back, back, this is now we are intra plaque with the, uh, with the big hematoma. So even this is important, not never inject from antegrade before stenting, because you will increase the hematoma. After that, this is the final angel result after multiple stenting. So the, uh, to, to, to explain some feature, the Navisha microcutter in this case was a very good uh, device with a, a very low profile uh, to cross the most challenging lesion. Has uh, a very good hydrophilic coating. The, uh, the name is Hydrax Plus coating and the very small profile. The tip entry profile is 1.6 French. It's a, a braiding technology with two length, 135 for antigen and 150 for, for retrograde. The second case is a complex CTO after cabbage failure. is a 74 male diabetes hypertension. In 2007, he has uh, uh, acute coronary syndrome with the three vessel uh, uh, disease, uh, was treated by surgery, so Lima LED, venous graft to OM and PDA. In December 2021, uh, for a worsening angina, with severe ischemia at the level of uh, myocardial scintigraphy. It was uh, studied in another center, they performed ANGIO, and the LIM LEDs occluded the proximal LED. Uh, we have a, a severe uh, calcified CTO, and the saphenous vein graph is patent. They try to open the LED with the perforation. So at this time, they stop, and the patient came to me with the uh, increasing worsening of angina. And then in April 2022, this year, uh, uh, was, uh, I decided to, to try again to have a reattempt to open this LED. You can see, clearly see the uh, huge calcification of this big LED after the septal branch. And this was the point of the, of the perforation because we have a, a big curve after the septal, you can see here, and uh, the, uh, the other operator went, uh, went out, uh, outside of the vessel at the, with the stiff wire. So I try with the soft wire, I, try, I start with the bandit, it's like filter XT, just to, to explain you a soft polymeric wire, but I was not able to penetrate the cap. So I increase, I need to increase with a very stiff wire. So Ornet 14, Gaia, Ornet 14, and even Diastato, because there was no way to, to puncture. And Diastato did a great job because he made the puncture at the beginning, then he went outside. But it was uh, so important, the first puncture of Diastato. Then with a step down with the Gladius, you can see here, real time crossing of the Gladius that uh, enter the, the small hole created by the Astato, in, and then follow the vessel architecture of the LED. You can see here on the left uh, the, the great behavior of the Gladius. And then I try to dilate with a, a small balloon with a suboptimal dilatation because of calcification. This time we decide to do something 
uh, different. Uh, so we need something more. Uh, shockwave in that situation is not so good to, will not be able to cross, to advance the lesion. We try, but we fail. So we tried the new scoring balloon by, uh, by Navision is the Naviscore. Naviscore is a I think it's a great device because uh, we have the combination of high pressure balloon catheter with very good profile and uh, a new scoring structure is a 19 hole scoring structure with uh, uh, axial filaments. It's, so it's, it's not the classical scoring balloon, but is a, uh, is a different structure you can see here. And so this hybrid design with axial filaments and nitinol gives the flexibility of this device and the possibility to go to high atmosphere. And then we have a very good refolding, we will see. So this is the advancement of Naviscore 2.5 after balloon dilatation. I need to push a lot, uh, but I was able to, to cross. You can see here again. Now I need to push the micro the balloon and then I'm able to cross and this is the picture of the device of the balloon then the rotation on a 20 24 atmosphere with very good opening of the lesion and then I try I want to try again uh, after uh, removal of the balloon this is the and the uh, refolding I was uh, able to to advance without any problem again the, the balloon. You know that this kind of balloon normally uh, we are not able to, to use again once we use it for the first time. Then after that, this performed PCI and stand, I was guided. And this is the final result. But uh, uh, I want to show even the, the follow up we performed 10 days ago, 15 days ago. You can see here. I hope. Okay, great. So 16 of November, you can see the perfect result now is better than, than the, the, the result at the end of the procedure. So the patient is perfectly um, stable, asymptomatic with a very good improvement of his clinical status. And you can see here the very good result of this opening of the, of the LED and uh, with the um, with dragalutin stent. It is uh, angiolite, uh, uh, ivascular dragalutin stent implantation from left main to mid of the LED. Then we go to the last case and then we have time to have some discussion. This is the most complex case uh, I did this year. It's a, a very unlucky patient, 50, uh, 54 years old male with uh, uh, some risk factor, but the most problem that he had in 1979. So uh, when he was really young, uh, an uh, NH lymphoma that was treated by radiotherapy. And then uh, in 2001, he have a, a new cancer for a sarcoma of the uh, dentate muscle. So he have a new radiotherapy for that cancer. So we have this kind of situation. In 2013, he developed, he developed a severe uh, aortic stenosis. So it was uh, studied and he, um, they show uh, severe uh, uh, coronary artery disease, and uh, it was treated by um, uh, aortic vein replacement with mechanical bioprosthesis and double cabbage. So we have a mechanical valve in the aorta and double cabbage, double uh, um, artery with lima to LED and uh, rima to OM. After that, uh, last year, it was admitted for severe congestive heart failure and AFib. The ejection fraction was less than 30%. So the angel show double occlusion of the cabbage. So both lima and rima are occluded. And we have a stenosis of the left main, CTO of the osteal cirque, CTO of the osteal right. It was treated in that center with PCI of left main, but the stand was underexpanded due to the calcification. Then in April of this year, a new relapse of atrial fibrillation and new congestive heart failure. The echo show an ejection fraction uh, more or less than 30%. So we plan during a, a Turing CTO and CHIP meeting uh, that I have every year in Italy, um, a, a live case of uh, left main LED PCI with shockwave, osteal circumflex CTO opening with ECMO mechanical support. Why ECMO? Because we cannot use Impella because he has a mechanical prosthesis. And, so, and we need, uh, uh, it was so complex, the case, we need the complete uh, support that with ECMO we are, we are 
we are able to, to drive the support uh, during the procedure. We start with 1.52 liter, we go up to 6 liter once we, we treat the left main. So this is the, the angio. You can see the, the, the rim occluded, the, the, the lima occluded, the ostium of the right completely occluded. This is the situation in November. You can see this lesion of the left main, huge cirque, bigger than the right, I think, and uh, even, uh, even a right occlusion. And uh, so we have a, a huge um, part of the mechanism that is jeopardized by this occlusion. And this, so this is the treatment, left main PCI in November. Uh, you can see the stent is suboptimally uh, expanded. And this was the final result. So when we came back during the live, we have seen even a progression of disease on the proximal LED. So this was a surprise. So we perform IVU that I'm not able to show you because of time, but we have a, a new plaque in the, in the, in the LED and uh, and so we need to treat the LED, and uh, we decide, yeah, what I told you by ECMO support uh, to do this kind of procedure. And this is the, the procedure during the live case. You can see the left main, and it's not, uh, it's not so bad, uh, but uh, you have a sort of an under expansion at the level of the circ occlusion. We treat the LED, this is already treated. And I went with the venture, the new microcatheter that is angulated microcatheter in order to increase the support. I tried with the, with the regular microcatheter, was not able to advance at all. I tried with the classical dual lumen, was no way to puncture because uh, I need some more support. So with the venture, I was able to, uh, to put the venture at the level of the ostium of the circ and uh, the microcatheter was, was stable. And I, did, I, need to, uh, I had the possibility to puncture with the Gaia 3, you can see on the left. Then I changed with the turnpike spiral and I crossed with the gladius wire in, the, in a branch. You can see on the right, I was able to cross. Next I take a, a, a dual lumen, and this is an anchor, an answer rigs dual lumen. I went to the OM easily with the Sion wire, and then I tried to dilate with the, with the non-compliant balloon. This is non-compliant balloon at 24 atmosphere. You can see here that is completely underexpanded. So this time I, I want to, to test the Navi score in that uh, tricky situation, because we have to, uh, to cross a stand strut in a, in a Ostia calcified, uh, severe calcified lesion. You can see here uh, the Naviscore behavior is great because uh, I need to push, but I am able to, to advance the, the, the Naviscore uh, beyond the stand strut at the level of the ostium of the circ. And then uh, I open the, the scoring balloon at uh, 18 atmosphere, not so good. Then I, I, had, uh, I need to increase to 24 without any problem. So this is the great advantage of this device. You can go very high atmosphere. And then I was able to fully open uh, the Naviscore. After that, stent implantation uh, uh, is a sort of, of uh, a TNP, kissing balloon, IVUS, uh, and very good final result. You can see here on the, 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 the two final shots of this really, really complex case. Then uh, in that situation, the, ECMO, the patient went only on ECMO. So this was uh, really essential for the, for, the, for the stability of the procedure to have the mechanical support. The patient now is stable, no recurrence of congestive heart failure. The ejection fraction is 45 uh, uh, this month. We have an evalu evaluation. And then in January, we plan to do the right. So we plan to open the Austrian right in more uh, stable situation and uh, with the retrograde approach. So uh, the take home message of uh, uh, this uh, session, then we have some, I think, uh, one minute or two for some question. In the modern approach to complex CTO, knowledge of all the strategy and the toolbox, we can achieve success in almost uh, all cases. New device uh, like, like Navision can simplify the procedure. In severe classified CTO, 
new scoring balloon device with very good uh, profile like Naviscore. Hybrid design and uh, rewrapping can help. And uh, uh, in the most complex chip situation, uh, we need to have uh, uh, help uh, with protected PCI. In this case, uh, ECMO was uh, really essential. So uh, I wait all of you in uh, we are able to come or join online the Turin City on Chip, the 4 and 5 of May in Italy. Uh, thank you very much. I think that we have time for uh, some questions. We have, uh, we have lunch, but uh, two or three minutes. Uh, just want to ask about the risk of perforation in Navi's core system. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, in my experience is less than non-compliant balloon with very high atmosphere. Because, you know, when uh, the perforation, uh, when you have perforation in an in a intraplaque, because when you have eccentric calcium or calcium nodule and you go completely in the, uh, the, the balloon, dilate uh, the non-calcified part of the vessel, right? So this is the, the concept. So uh, the advantage of, of a scoring balloon of this Navi score is that normally you can open not at high atmosphere. So you can go to 16, 18, and you can fully open the, the lesion, and you can cut the calcified part of the of the of the of the plaque. So avoiding to go outside in the in the opposite part of the vessel. So normally it's like that. Then uh, clear. Uh, the most the calcium is concentric, and the less is the risk of perforation. The most is eccentric, and then you have always a risk of, uh, uh, of uh, having a perforation there. There are some other uh, comments? Do you see any benefit of ECMO in this high-risk procedure instead of Impella? Yeah. In, uh, yeah, this is a good question. In this particular case, uh, ECMA was not possible because uh, we have a, a mechanical aortic replacement valve, so uh, you cannot put impella over, over the, the mechanical valve. So uh, this is an um, important point. This, in this particular case, was the only strategy. Uh, in my experience, now I'm using impella in 95% uh, of uh, protected PCI. Uh, I use ECMO in uh, uh, two other uh, different cases. One was a uh, left main CTO with uh, uh, less than 10% ejection fraction. It was a crazy case of many years ago in which the patient was, uh, the heart was, 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 was not working. So in this case, uh, the impella uh, is not enough. Then the problem of impella that if you have a ventricular fibrillation, uh, uh, the impella doesn't work. So the ECMO in very high, high risk situation is uh, help you too much because you can do the procedure even with the patient is uh, uh, in cardiac arrest. So with the impella you are not, because with impella if the patient is in cardiac arrest you have no uh, retrograde flow from the, from the right ventricle and you, it, you cannot do the procedure. So this is the, the main concept uh, of uh, these two different mechanical support. Great, so thank you very much for your attention.